Hi, this is a tutorial that uh, explains you how to implement the save component system. For now, I'm going to use the FPS micro game from Unity. So when you search micro game in the asset store, you see the carding, the FPS, and the platformer micro game. The micro game is a very small FPS game where you have to kill enemies, you have a jetpack, and those kind of things, so you can ex expand upon it a little bit. It's very simple. In order to win a level, you have to eliminate all the enemies. And then it goes to the next level or it ends the game. And my goal right now is to implement saving in this prototype. So in order to start using the plugin, I've already put it in the project, as you can see on the left. And I'm going to add a savable to the player. With this component, you will have to add a savable to each game object you want to save separately. So in this case, we want to save the player. We add a savable. And then for the savable, it doesn't save anything yet. We have to specify components. Or rather, there are components that implement a iSavable interface. And this script fetches every component on this object and all these sub-objects. There are some components already made, so we can do save position. As you can see, it automatically adds, adds it to a list. And save rotation. Then we play the game. And in order to test this, we just start and exit the game. So when I look here, and I start it again. As you can see, it's saved. You can actually look at what it stores. Going to saving, open save location. And then you have this save game file. As you can see here, it stored the rotation and the position of the player. This is like the this is the global identifier. So this is the object identification, this part. And this is the component identification. It merges it so it's always uh, a unique type of identification. Okay, so now the player is already saved. That's quite easy, right? Now we're also going to do the enemy. Just add a savable. Position, rotation. In this case, the enemy also dies. And I believe the visibility just gets set. It doesn't really get destroyed. So we save the visibility as well. And since there might be more enemies, we are just also going to add this to the prefab. Same with the player. And the same thing for the turrets. Stable, position, rotation, visibility. All right, let's test this. As you can see, the enemy is gone. Eventually, we are also gonna. I'm also gonna show you how to spawn objects that get saved as well. This is empty as well. For the visibility, we can also use it, apply it to the pickups. So, save ball and just the visibility. We don't really care about the rotation or position. It's going to be the same anyway, unless we're spawning them. So, I guess we're still going to use the position eventually. Some future proofing. So, you can see it has automatically added it for this one as well. All right, the next step would be to also save the health. And for this, we have to implement uh, the iSavable interface into the health component of this project. So I'm going to search for the health component. And you can actually see this variable, current health. This is used to um, configure or set the, the current health of the uh, object. 
So we want to save this variable. In order to do this, we have to implement the isavable interface. And I use alt enter. And then I get an autocomplete. Tells me to implement this or use this. And then alt enter again. And then it implements the interface. And I'll go through this. Like the unsafe condition is a way to say, okay, I don't want to save this. Please don't save it. If you don't want to save it, you return the condition for which it wants to save or not to save. In this case, we just want to save it always. And on save, we will have to pass a string. And the string goes to the save file stored in the, like, uh, with this, for instance, yeah, now the thirds have, have also been added. We want to, like, this is the data string. And we want to uh, put the health value in here. And one way to do that is to use the um, JSON utility. So we make a new struct. Public uh, floats current health. And we have to define it as system serializable. This is so that Unity can inspect this variable as well. This is needed for the JSON utility uh, because it doesn't work on non-inspectable or ser Unity serialized uh, fields. So, and in order to use this to create a new struct, we do return JSON utility to JSON. So we turn an object into a JSON file. In this case, it's the save data. And this is one way to initialize a struct, to just uh, do it right away. So you can actually define uh, this current health. And then now this gets sent, like this data gets sent to the, uh, to here eventually, to a new field. And now we want to load it as well. And we can do that by um, turning this data into a, back into a object using the JSON utility from JSON, save data, data. And then save data, data, oh, save data. And then we just need the current health is save data. Current health. And then it will overwrite the current health. I do believe this gets called before start. So we have to add a check to see if um, it has loaded already. So it doesn't set it to max health. It's loaded. False. If it's not loaded. And then on load, we say as loaded is true. So uh, in a way this gets called, this flag gets set so that it in start it doesn't set the current health to the max health. Now we're gonna test this. Well, first I'll have to add the, or do I have to add anything? I don't believe so. Here, it automatically finds it because of the interface. And the same goes for the enemies. So when we're playing the game, right now I have all the data already set to something. I have a hotkey to actually wipe all the current data in the scene. And you can enable hotkeys through this menu. You can find it in saving and then open save settings. And then you can enable hotkeys here and then you can press F6 to wipe the current scene data. So I'm gonna do that right now. F6, escape, just take a look what happens. It wipes it all. Only based on the, the objects of the current scene. There's actually a method you can also call to remove data based on different scenes. So when you play again, everything's reset. And now we're gonna test the health. So you see that it's 50% now, it's damaging as well. And then we're gonna stop, play again. 
And you can see the health has saved. Alright, the next thing is having enemies spawn health and that it stays inside of the scene. We'll have to take a look at the enemy, how it actually spawns the prefab. Um, this is a loot prefab. Okay, right now the system only works by using the resources folder. Eventually, I still have to add a method to use asset bundles instead. So it will use an asset bundle reference to load in assets. This would be a lot better in terms of memory use. So, um... Oh, for now I'll put the pickup in the resources folder and I'll have to change some of the code in the hoverbot. So I'll look at the reference for the loot pickup, loot prefab. I use shift F12 to see all the references and then instead of trying to instantiate it this way going to use the save master use the same method with alt enter saving and then spawn save prefab right now the only source is resources and we're going to look at the name it's loot health and then pressing f6 to remove all data Now it doesn't, didn't really set the proper location. This should suffice for displaying how it works. And when it starts again, you can see it's still here. Right now I'm gonna look at the spawning code for the location. Okay. So for okay, spawn object. Then we're gonna use the same location, spawn object, oh, spawn object, transform position, F6 again, and we're going to load it in again. Now it spawns pro properly, and when we load the game again, it will be there again. How it works actually is, and a spawn instance manager that's set for each separate scene you can see it here save master main scene and then the instance manager i am and what it does it um, stores the name of the resource to spawn and the identification and all the prefabs use the same um, identification for the components below it so it just has to spawn this and it will ultimately fetch everything and also when you grab the uh, object okay when i quit you see it automatically removes all the instance data as well when it gets destroyed one of the features or the good things about this framework is that you can make new scenes and new objects and you don't have to create a new implementation for each new object you add into the scene. So if you want, for instance, um, multiple of these enemies, like, okay, sure, I know. I want each of these have a new ID assigned to them. So let's go wild. And then when I quit again and I load in again, it'll still be there. This makes it very easy to add new content. And then, uh, yeah. So yeah, this, this was a brief overview of what the functionality is for the safe system. As you can see, it's pretty easy to use and it's pretty easy to extend and create your own saves. All right, so thank you for listening.